This is Ross Point 1 2, 5. Back for yet another great reaction. Okay. This is the epilogue for Stellar. No. Greater Terran Union, Stellaris and Victor. I'm trying to remember. I'm not looking at the screen this time. Uh, yeah. So this is the epilogue for, for Greater Terran Union. And uh, I hope I said that right. You might need to put subtitles on for me sometimes because I'm. I. I've got what I call lazy tongue, where my, my tongue just doesn't form the words properly. Yeah. So, and my accent as well, it sure doesn't help. So yeah, um, this is the last one of Greater Town Union. Yes. And we'll move on, moving on to the other ones after this. So I'm just putting my drink. Sure I'm all ready for the video starting. I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, I mean. Kind of sad, you know. I did enjoy the the turn union ones, you know. Uh, hard to see it go, but I'm also excited because we're starting a new chapter. Uh, somebody came into my comments and said recently, this is this is a game that uh, the Templin Institute played. They played the game. This is what they got. They played the game, so this is where the stories come from. But obviously, if you play the game, you're gonna get a different story every time. You know, it depends on what you choose to do. Yeah. This is what they got so if you hadn't subscribed to this channel please do so because it really helps me out and if you like movie reactions anime go to my second channel which is royal spartan take two i've been doing different movies on there and uh, reactions to attack on titan dubbed version of the anime so yeah you might want to subscribe over there too if you like what you see and let's jump in On April 22nd, 2089, military space surveillance satellites from nine separate nations began tracking a group of objects that had entered the periphery of the solar system. The arrival of the Tyrum and the war that followed left humanity on the brink of extinction. In desperation, the world united under a regime like none other in history. The government that would become the Greater Terran Union was not founded on any idealistic principles or for the benefit of the few at the cost of the many, but on the overriding necessity that drastic measures be taken to ensure the survival of mankind itself. The steps taken were severe and at times cruel. Okay, I just realized I thought the epilogue would be like uh, maybe the end of the union. You know, it tells you how maybe it came to an end or something before the next one starts. But no, it's just going through everything that that uh, has happened. That's fine. You know, keep get you up to date, you know. That's pretty good, I like that. But three centuries later, when the homeworld of the Tyrum race was cracked apart beneath the most terrible weapon of humanity, none could deny that the Greater Terran Union had fulfilled its oldest promise. Few alien nations truly understood what drove the Union in its relentless pursuit of vengeance, why it had embraced such unrepentant nationalism, such an overpowering military-industrial complex, and at times, an almost tyrannical government. The Greater Terran Union found scarcely any allies as it spread across the stars, only new enemies and later subjects. When the Sword of Terra was unleashed, the galaxy responded with horror and protests erupted across every world. But when the survival of all life was in jeopardy, it was the fleets of the Union that pressed onwards where no others would. It was through the might of Terran warships, through the courage of Terran soldiers, and the complete commitment of the Terran citizenry that the interdimensional rift was closed and the galaxy saved. Yes, that's right. Humanity stood up when everyone else sort of like hid away, went to like their own little corners and hid away from what was coming. It's more or less waited for the end when humanity just stood up and fought back. And when the others saw that, they were like, oh, we have to fight too. By the way, you know. But yeah, it was the turns that, that, that really led the, the fight, you know? Pretty good. They became the heroes in the end. 
expanded the galaxy pretty much. Again, the great cities of alien nations were filled with demonstrations. This time, however, protesters extolled the virtues of Terran exceptionalism, lamenting the cowardice and failure of their own governments. That's right. There were some who believed that the defeat of the interdimensional invaders would usher in a new era of peace and prosperity across the galaxy, one built on mutual trust and charity. The reality was very different. The power vacuum left behind by the Jazgavaz, the Zani, and later the invaders only laid the seeds for future rivalries and conflicts. And now we're getting to the part that I wanted to get to. What happened after the invaders were beaten? I was, I was hoping this would be explained. I'm just wondering, does it tell you the end of the, of the Terran Union? Or does it just keep going on? Is that, is that what it is? Foreign powers moved to spread their influence across the devastated regions of the galaxy. The Greater Terran Union was hardly above such political maneuvering, and no less opportunistic. Yet in victory, the Union had earned admiration and respect. For the first time, former rivals looked to it for leadership, guidance, and protection. On worlds okay. rocked by instability, corrupt regimes, or conflict, Terran ideals became as valuable as Terran weapons. Political movements rose across the galaxy and through civil war or revolution, founded new nations inspired by humanity. Some became valuable partners, others loyal vassals, and some were annexed directly as new commissariats at their request. In a piece of historical irony, the disparate survivors of the Florian matriarchy were the first among the latter. As citizens of the Greater Terran Union, they were given the chance to begin anew. In time, through the vast efforts of the entire Union, life on their former homeworld was restored, and Garden was named the capital world of the Florian Commissariat. It was wow. the first of many such declarations. On July 11th, 2756, Union citizens from dozens of species assembled aboard Triumph Station, in orbit over what had once been the heart of the Tyrim. For centuries, this station and its predecessors had been at the center of a solemn pilgrimage, a place where Terran citizens would congregate to pay their respects to the past and to the fallen. But on the 600th anniversary of the Greater Terran Union, it bore witness to something new. Trigen, daughter of Enim, the first Wasari High Marshal, proclaimed that while the values of the nation she served were rooted in humanity, they were not humanities alone. To be Terran was not the privilege of a single species, something granted simply by birthright. It had to be earned through sacrifice, through loyal service, through the steadfast belief that every citizen had the duty to contribute to the good of the Union and lay down their lives in its defense. To deny any that chance was to betray the tenets the nation had been founded on. See, I said that near the start. You know, the people bringing in Obviously, there was like a class system at the at the start of it, where where the Terrans were at the top and the alien races were, were lower down, and now they're saying that everybody everybody who has earned their place, everyone who has fought for the Union and fought for for humanity and fought for Terran, you know, uh, Terran ideals and things like that, there to defend it all, earns the right to call themselves Terran. That's fantastic. A Wasari serving aboard a cruiser of Fleet Command, a Polenian working to root out corruption in the bureaucracy, a Rixian who donated a portion of his stipend to the National Reserve. These citizens and countless others were no less worthy of citizenship and no less worthy of the title Terran. It would take another century and countless wars, interventions, and police actions before the authority of the Greater Terran Union stretched across the entire galaxy. But with Whoa. each victory came new peoples and new ideas. Today, on the streets of any Terran world, hundreds of species walk as equals, and all can boast with well-earned pride of the first within their race to earn the highest tiers of citizenship. They stand side by side in the museums of Earth itself and gaze at depictions of the war against the Tyrim, the battles against the Compact, the discovery of the L-Cluster, the defeat of the Great Scavenger, the Florian Invasion, the Nex Uprising. 
They watch historical footage from the war in heaven and the final attack on the interdimensional rift and are shaken by the thought that the survival of the Union was ever uncertain. Each night, they stand in the plazas and parade grounds, holding aloft the ceremonial torches of new recruits, who take their oaths of citizenship beneath the statues of the Union's greatest heroes, That's ready beautiful. to lead the next great age. Uh, for instance, there are parts of this here, like like when you see the, the skyline, the buildings and stuff, and see the, in the streets, it kind of reminds me of Star Wars, you know, the Coruscant sort of thing. Like humans have, have created like the, the Republic, Star Wars, that sort of thing. It's kind of how you want it to go. You know, obviously they had to conquer all the world, so. Yes, but anyone can be a citizen. They earn it, you know what I mean? And anyone can be, can have the honor to come to Terran and stuff. Be, so, be part of something bigger and greater. Yeah. That's literally how you want it to go. That's, that's a good ending. That's a great ending. Advanced technologies have pushed the boundaries of Terran expansion, and the devastation wrought across the galaxy has left an insatiable need for raw materials and resources. Already, the first probes have arrived in neighboring galaxies, and construction has begun on a wave of starships that will depart for these distant stars. Generations of sacrifice and hardship will soon be rewarded. For as the Greater Terran Union prepares to embark on the next great journey in its history, it marches towards this uncertain future, united in purpose and determined to never be caught unprepared again. Every wonder encountered shall be utilized, every terror overcome. And should any force in the universe ever again bring death and destruction to a world claimed by the citizens of the Greater Terran Union, each injustice will be repaid a hundred and then a thousand times over. Every galaxy will know that they came to the wrong neighborhood and knocked on the wrong door. Yeah. Okay, that is the end of the video. And yeah, that's obviously that's their interpretation of it. that's what happened when they played the game. And that's what they said said that at the end that it will return. It's just one story of many. In other words, uh Terran Union might fall apart in one one of the stories or maybe get conquered. Maybe turn into something else, you know? Maybe maybe Terran Union gets destroyed or conquered, maybe humans rise up again beat whoever it was that came and conquered them again and maybe they create something new rather than Terran Union this time. Yeah, that's a great story though. I mean, I like the ending of it. It's a very happy ending. Everybody gets a chance to be a citizen. Everybody gets a chance to be Terran. And yeah, that's honestly the best ending you could get. Or for humans anyway. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments sec. Yeah? Do you like this ending too? I think it was too, uh, too good, too bland. You know, too maybe maybe you could guess this could happen. And I mean, I know what I did. Sort of said this this would be the best outcome where everybody's just equal and everybody gets a chance to be a citizen and everybody gets you know. And happy ending was it too happy? Would you prefer an ending with a little more hardship in it or? Maybe where they where they kept alien species down, you know, kept the class system. Who knows? I mean, let me know. Okay, I really enjoyed this. It's the end of this one, this story at least. I'm sure, there'll be others. There are others. I know there are. You guys are waiting for me to do them as well. I know that is true. I will get to them. I'm gonna be doing a boys video after this one. What I picked. It's not requested, but uh, I just want to say that again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and it really helps me out in the channel and stuff like that. There, you know, I really need all the help I can get. The channel isn't growing really that well. I mean, it's growing, it's growing a little bit here and there. I get subscribers here and there, but we really like to see it grow a lot more. So, if you really like my content, help me out, yeah. And pass on the word like hey this guy's a great reaction person and you know like his stuff check him out <laughs> if you know people who like reactions 
So yeah. Uh you like movie reactions and anime? Uh you might want to check out my second channel which is Royal Spartan Take Two, where I do movies and I'm doing uh reactions to the first season of Attack on Titan. I've got a couple episodes on it coming up soon and uh, a lot of movies on there. Over 60 videos, I think, on there at the moment. Really working it up. And give it a try because it takes a lot of editing for those movie reactions and all, you know. But a lot of time I put into it. And uh, until next time, I am out of here.